All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the second part of the show, we are going to talk about Dalvin Cook joining the Cowboys. So he was uh, going to Dallas to visit the Cowboys. And I know he, he did have some connection with the Cowboys earlier in the offseason, but nothing ended up happening. But now recently went for a visit, and he did indeed sign with the Cowboys. And last year was a tough year for Dalvin Cook. Um, he was released by the Vikings, and the Jets ended up picking him up, and it just did not work out for him with the Jets. These are his stats with the Jets last year. 67 carries, 214 yards, no touchdowns. Now, the Jets ended up letting him go, and he signed with the Ravens. And he had that big run for like 20 yards against the Texans, and that was it. So, he's looking to turn back the clock with Dallas. Now, it's funny because looking on social media, you see, wow, you know, Dalvin and Zeke in the same backfield you know in 2019 this would be like the best backfield in the league and it really would um but that's not the case both players are a little bit older now and you're not going to get the same level of productivity out of those two players i mean especially i don't know i mean zeke i think will be good in goal line situations and if they're trying to pick up a first down but you know, Zeke is not the same player. But, and, and Dalvin's not the same player either. But I do think, I don't think Dalvin is completely done yet. Now, I think Dalvin's best days are behind him. I agree with that 100%. But, I'm willing to give Dalvin another chance just because of the situation that he was in last year. Because... He was supposed to be playing in an offense that had Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers gets hurt. They brought him in as an insurance policy for Brees Hall. Because they the Jets didn't know if Brees Hall was healthy because he's coming off of his you know, torn ACL. And we knew right away from the week one game against the Bills last year that Brees Hall was healthy with those two big runs that he had. The one to start the game and the uh, one a little bit later in the game when Zach Wilson took over. And it looked like he was going to take it to the house. but So you had that. But also you had the Jets' offensive line as well. That was not good. So I just feel like a combination of all those things led to the kind of season that Dalvin had with the Jets. And that I'm willing to give him another chance. Because now he's going to a team like the Cowboys that has a good offensive line. And there's really no clear... RB1 on the team. Like, yes, they have Zeke, but you also have Deuce Vaughn and Rico Dowdle. Like, Rico Dowdle is going to be someone that comes in on third down. I mean, Deuce Vaughn's a young guy, but is he going to step up? I don't know. And like I said, they brought back Zeke. So, right, it, the Cowboys' backfield is a question mark. And I feel like Dalvin could take advantage of that and... Maybe he finds the fountain of youth again and plays like how he did his, you know, not exactly like his last year in Minnesota, but similar to that. Because I just, I just find it hard to believe that he just completely fell off a cliff. I really do think a lot of it had to do with the situation that he was put in. But, you know, it, it happens. I mean, the, the running back position... These guys age very quickly. But like I said, I'm willing to at least give him another chance with a better team. And the Cowboys need it because, you know, their backfield, they, they got to be able to run the ball a little bit. You know, it can't be Dak throwing the ball 50, 60 times a game. I mean, he's definitely not going to be throwing 60 times a game, but... You don't want Dak it all to be on Dak. Now, you got CeeDee Lamb back, so at least that's squared away. You know, so you know the Cowboys' passing game is going to be good. But got to have a running game to rely upon. And the Cowboys usually have a good running game. 
I mean, Tony Pollard left in free agency, signed with the Titans. But usually throughout Dak's whole career, he's had a solid running game to back him up. The prime Zeke years. 2022 was probably the best year because, you know, Zeke was still, I mean, he wasn't the same as he was his first couple of years in the league. But you had him and you had Tony Pollard, who went off in 2022. And a lot of people point to this, that Pollard probably works better in a committee where he's not, like, yeah, he gets more of the workload, but you have a number two back that can come in and take some of that workload off of him. Because last year, Pollard was the guy. There was really no number two option. I mean, they had, like, some of the guys that are on the team now were on the team last year, but you didn't have that Zeke to balance it out. But also, he was coming off of, you know, his injury from the playoff game against the 49ers. And we'll see how he is now in Tennessee with Tajay Spears. That could be a nice little duo that they got in Tennessee. And I drafted Will Levis as my third quarterback, so I'm hoping he has a big year because, I, I, I you know, if, if Brock Purdy or Kirk Cousins doesn't do well or someone gets hurt, Will Levis is going to have to be the guy that steps up. So, um, I'm hoping for a big year out of Will Levis. But, yeah, so Tony Pollard leaves. You still got, like I said, you still got Dowdle. You still got Deuce Vaughn. But, you know, it, it, there, there's question marks there. And I think, you know... It, it's a low-risk signing, bringing in Dalvin. If it doesn't pan out, he's gone. Um, I just think it's interesting that it took this long for him to sign with the team. But that's just how it played out. So, we'll see how it goes. You know, last year, Zeke, I think, had... A little over 600 yards rushing with the Patriots. But, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really curious to see how their backfield shapes out. And, you know, it doesn't, it's, it's not going to be easy the first week. Because they're taking on a Cleveland Browns team in their stadium. And that crowd is going to be in a frenzy defense is really good and I, I think that's going to be a tough game for the Cowboys I really do but um yeah we'll, we'll see how it goes but uh, I'm I'm willing to give Dalvin at least one more chance like if he goes out there and he plays similar to how he did with the Jets, then that's it. But I'm going to say that he still has a little bit of gas left in the tank. And I think in this, in, in a better situation with the Cowboys, I, I, I do think that you'll see a different kind of Dalvin and not the Dalvin from last year. Because his last year in Minnesota... In 2022, 264 carries, 1,173 rushing yards, and 8 touchdowns. And he averaged 4.4 yards. Last year, he averaged 3.2. Which was a career low. The 2020 Dalvin, which I told you guys we were watching the 2020 highlights. 1,557 rushing yards, 312 carries, which is a career high. Average five yards per carry. 16 touchdowns. That was his best year. And then it's kind of been a, a slow decline since then. But I, I, I think there's some juice left. How much? We'll see. But... It's a low-risk, high-reward signing by the Cowboys. And I think he could step in and be... Well, I, I think amongst the running backs that he ha that they have, I think he might be the best running back. 
unless Deuce Vaughn shows that, you know, the young guy, unless he shows that he could be the one that takes over, I think Dalvin is the best running back in that room. Right now. So, we'll see what happens. But, um, let me know what you guys think, though, about that signing for the Cowboys. How do you feel about it? Like I said, low risk, high reward. Um, he's in a better situation. If, you know, he if he gets the, the bulk of the carries, you know, maybe that gets him into a rhythm. Because that's the other thing, too. I mean, you, you know, Brees is the lead guy. Last year, Brees is the lead guy. You know, you're coming in at certain points to take the workload off of him. And you just can't get into a rhythm. So, that you know, that's the other thing, too. But, I, I mean, you, you could sit here and say, well, you're giving him, you're giving Dalvin a bunch of excuses. And maybe I am. But that's just how I see it. I'm willing to give him another chance. At least one more chance. But before we go to break... I just want to remind you guys again to tip or donate and get your comments recognized. Make sure you go to the little dollar sign icon in the chat. That will create a super chat that you put out on the live broadcast. I will acknowledge it during the live broadcast. And it just makes the show more interactive between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. We appreciate your guys' viewership each and every day as we put out content. And any kind of donation that you can make to the show means the world to us. And... Also, the alternative way to help out the show is also going to the link, gsmcpodcast.net. So, when we come back from our next break, uh, we will talk about some of the notable cuts uh, from uh, this past week. Um, you know, some of the, the big names that were let go, and I'll give you my thoughts when we come back from break so with that being said stick around and we'll be right back here on the gsmc football podcast <laughs> 